Welcome everybody to this session about the beginning and profiling tools in the Linux kernel. Uh, so, why this session? It is in fact a consequence of uh, uh, many questions we have in Adeno Amended. So, it's a company that is uh, about BSP adaptations to various, uh, various hardware and uh, BSP making, drivers development, optimizations, time, uh, boot time. Uh, power management, things like that. And we have a lot of questions from our customers that encounter problems uh, saying, oh, okay, we have that problem. <coughs> what can we use to uh, debug the stuff, to profile? Uh, okay, we have uh, fast boot demos and to really profiling the, the, the boot times and things like that. What can we use for that? Um, so, uh, all that, uh, we take a little time to do a listing, in fact, of available kernels features for debugging, profiling, tracing, and finally, uh, do a listing of the tools that exist in the community and that use the, those features. So, this, I think, all of you knows what he's tracing, debugging, profiling about, but just uh, what you have to, uh, what is important, in fact, it's to uh, remember that when you do that, you will have impact on what you are tracing, debugging, or profiling. So it's quite the I remember in principle, when you see the stuff, you're not really seeing what is really doing in the normal world. Uh, so tracing, it's specialized use of logging in a debugging uh, purpose, uh, interrupted, uh, and you will modify your source code, so you will have impact on uh, your runtime. Uh, interactive debugging, you will have also impact, but uh, it is binary modifications, and you will need specialized software. And when you provide, you are sampling your system, so at each sample, you, you will have impact on it. For the features, oops, sorry. <coughs> Well, we cannot speak about tracing without sp uh, speak about Prinka. <laughs> I think it is the, probably the most commonly used uh, function in the kernel uh, to uh, do tracing. So its f first purpose is logging, but it is a lot used to do debugging. <coughs> uh, so it used uh, when it logs, you don't you, you use a circular uh, a circular log buffer, sorry, and so it can be called from any context. It has not locks or things like that, so you can use it also in inter context. Uh, to activate it in the configuration, just use config printer. Uh, you can you will have its outputs on the console on the current console of the system generally, but you can. Uh, configure that with in the proc file system and you can use the demisage tool to have all the the circular law buffer entries and in its formats uh, it's like printf in fact you just don't have the um, the floats because there is no floats in the kernel but you have specialized formats uh, I uh, something you can do. It's uh, see documentation uh, in the kernel sources in documentation Pritka format. You will see that is a lot of the you uh, a lot more of the um, formats commonly used. You can print buffers, things like that, a lot of things. Well, now Pritka is done. <laughs> um, DebugFS. 
it's a great feature of the kernel, uh, quite recent. And in fact, it's like PROC or SIS, PROCFS or SISFS. It's a sp specialized uh, file system, RAM based, and it is dedicated to kernel debugging. With PROC, normally you have rules, you only put processes information on, 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 on the file system. SIS, you will have all the kernel objects and uh, the information related to these kernel objects. And you have sp rules for developers to put only one value per, uh, per file and things like that. In the debugfs, you can do whatever you want. It's just about an interface for the user learned to have kernel information, uh, kernel debugging information. So to activate it <coughs> on the configuration, DebugFS, you just have to search for DebugFS, find it, uh, it's in kernel features. Uh, you can read more about it in documentation, file system, DebugFS, uh, in the kernel sources. And on most systems, because uh, it is mounted in the sys file system, in the, uh, under sys kernel debug. It is important, the BigFS, because uh, it is used by a lot of other kernel debugging features and by a lot of tools. And has uh, an interaction between uh, uh, an interface to configure uh, traces and things like that. So, we had Prinka, but Prinka has I overheard. Uh, if you don't uh, protect it with branch or things like that. So, uh, it was common to protect with macros, debugging and s stuff like that. Now you have a feature, it's dynamic debug, that is able to activate or deactivate at runtime some uh, kernel information code. This is general. Currently, it is essentially peer debug and dev debug that are branched to dynamic uh, debugging. And in fact, there is in the debugfs file system a specific file, so dynamic debug control. And this interface lets you either have all the dynamic debugs that you can activate or deactivate, so list them all. So you cat just the, this control file and you will have lines of formats, activatables and deactivatables per module, per function, per, uh, per traces. And when you echo with uh, simple query language, in fact, it's based on the simple query language, see dynamic debug how to to see all this language, and you can echo strings with, for example, the name of the module plus p. It will print all the traces corresponding to that model. It will activate those traces, and you minus p, it will deactivate the traces. So you can activate and deactivate specific traces in specific parts of the kernel. Great feature. So, but this is mostly about tracing. Dynamics probes is, is a good, uh, good uh, enhancement uh, since Prinka. But there is also more specialized things to do probes. Probing is uh, okay. Uh, what value has this uh, this variable? Uh, where am I in the kernel? Uh, things like that. And Doing heavens, okay. I'm I'm passing from this. Uh, I am in the um, in this code flow, so I want heavens uh, corresponding to that. <coughs> there is two kind of probes: static, dynamic ones. The static ones are more tracing oriented, and it's well. Prinka is part of the static probes. It's the uh, how to say that? The less featured 
a static prod. Uh, so generally they, they use branching and with the built-in expect of GCC, so with predicts of branch, it is, uh, it is uh, the, um, the static probes when activated are unlikely, unlikely branches and they always have a low overhead because there is always the if and some uh, variables so even when not activated the, the, the on or off stuff will be tested. Uh, dynamic probes are more debug oriented uh, and it's more like breakpoints. You break your original code to do another things. So when it's off, you have your, your original code, so no overhead. But when you do actually break and do extra things, you will have potentially a high overhead. And you need for that to install it, uh, you will need debug symbols and acknowledge of your of your map uh, of your kernel map mapping but this is really general to be more specific in static probes in the kernel there is there was the kernel markers the, that were replaced by trust points trust points and trust events so what are well, kernel uh, makers uh, was embedded the tracing code into the kernel, into the kernel code directly. So uh, it has quite a high overhead, and uh, it was difficult to, to tracking the um, the instrumentation code. So trust point, trust points were added to and uh, were made to replace kernel makers in order to separate instrumentation code from kernel code. What that mean? Uh, when you are when you want to use a trust point, you will declare it. You give it a name with a specific macro. You will give it the prototype of the uh, prob that will be associated to the trust point and you will give the argument names. You have a macro to define it on the on the on the implementation and on the module that use the trust points that want to trust things you just have to call trust the name of the trust points you 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 give, you give you, the the name given by uh, to the trust point. So there, when your module, uh, when the code will reach the trust name uh, function, it will put heavens. Uh, when on, it will put trusting heavens. And you can how to put uh, how to activate or deactivate this this <coughs> trust points. It's to associate a prob to the trust point by using in another model, for example, uh, the the common use of that is you make a little model that in its initialization will do the reg uh, will will do a register of a prob, so the callback here to the specific trust point. And at that time, the trust point will be activated. And uh, so at each time the, the code hits trust name, it will put an event and it will call the callback. In the callback, you can do print car, you can do whatever you want, uh, associated to the trust point event. You unregister the trust point on when you're unloading the model and <coughs> it will off the trust points and trust name will have quite no overhead. So to activate it in the configuration config trust points, 
and you will have more information than that on documentation trust response. So, for the trust response, uh, also before 2637, there was okay a big there was for each trust response a branch and a branch on a global variable variable generally. So when activated, it was doing the, it was calling the callback. And when not activated, just the um, problem of the cache miss because uh, of a lot of global variables. And uh, essentially that, that, that problem and the branching stuff that do a little bit over it. After 2637 to uh, betterize the thing, uh, there is a more complicated and more sophisticated uh, way of doing. By when you when you are uh, compiling your code, the trust, in fact, with sp specific uh, linker. Uh, stuff, it is replaced by, by no ops. So, virtually, you have no overhead on your trust point when they are off. And when you register and unregister your trust points, so the probes on your trust points, it will replace dynamically, dynamically. There is a table with the places where. Uh, the name of the trust point and the place where replaced the no operations by actually the call to your callback. So when off trust point has quite not no hovered, and when on you have your traces. But uh, there was still something to do. It's register and register, and the uh, second module stuff, making a little module to register to register probes on trust points at loading and unregister them at unloading, and so it was not easy to use. Trust events have been added for that. Uh, it's quite an event system for trust points by adding a ring buffer and a debug FS interface. So now, when uh, models declare trust points by the trust event macro, in the root FS and through the debug FS, so in debug FS, tracing, and there you will have a lot of files where you can catch all the available trust points, you can activate them, you can uh, activate event per event. Uh, so directly on the console, you can manage your trust points and activate or deactivate them on the kernel. Uh, when a tr trust point is hit, it will commit a binary buffer corresponding to, to the trust event in a ring buffer. And tools like F-Trace, LTTNG, Perf, will see them. And the DebugFS interface will be able to uh, retrieve the entries in the rig buffer. And then it will be formatted in string formats and things like that. So there is with TrustPunch and trust event, you have really a differentiation between the real kernel code and the code that is used to format, to instrument, to do the uh, actually do the callbacks and things like that. So instrumentation code and kernel code more easier to <coughs> maintain and things like that. <coughs> Car probes, uh, great stuff. But these are for the second part. So, so the dynamic probes. This is not traces you had to your code. There are 
uh, events you can add in the binary code at runtime. It's not modification of the source code, it's modification of the binary image. So for that, it will use software breakpoints. Uh, we will see uh, specific uh, how breakpoint works on the next slide. Uh, you can activate it with config caprobs, and there is more documentation on caprobs uh, in the documentation part of the kernel. <coughs> Something, uh, in fact, when you want to register or unregister a, a caprob, it's like trust points not trust even, but trust points, you generally need to do a little model that at its initialization will register the cap row and at its uh, deinitialization will unregister the cap rows. And the cap row is just a structure that will say, okay, I want to, to have an event on that symbol name of the kernel uh, potentially an offset in the symbol, so you have a, a function name with an offset in, in this function, and when you hit this point, it, and when this point will be hit, it, it uh, prehandler the function prehandler you put in the in the structure uh, will be called. The actual original code will be done, and after the post handler will be called after that and it will return to the original place where you were before you, uh, just after the breakpoint. So on ARM, something interesting is that uh, the implement actual implementation of the breakpoints will depend of on the ar architecture, of course. And on x86, you will use in tree or things like that. On ARM, you will use specific instruction that is uh, guaranteed by ARM to be an illegal instruction. So, in fact, you will do a fault <coughs> to manage these faults as a breakpoint. And then save the context, do your pre in the original instruction stuff, post handler, and then restore the context. It just come back just after the breakpoint. Now, <coughs> more <coughs> stuff, more um, uh, more for profiling purpose. Uh, there are the perf events in the kernel, and it's mainly an API that will uh, abstract all you can find on modern CPUs. So you have PMUs. You have uh, on on ARM it's on the coprocessor 15. Uh, so you have special registers that uh, counters and performance counters and performance registers. You can uh, manage to record <coughs> uh, events on the on the system and uh, how how much you missed your cache, uh, how much uh, you hit branch, things like that the sequels of the CPUs. So generally on the on the CPUs you have a limited number of those registers and uh, but you can ask to the kernel okay I want uh, say you have four registers for that you can ask ten register ten uh, ten perf heavens you will map each perf heavens to some countries and uh, to the four countries you have to the limited number, and it will manage, it will count, in fact, on the hardware counters in a run robin fashion. And for, uh, so, uh, say you want singles and cache miss and a lot of other things, uh, you will have sometimes singles, in some other time cache miss, and on the, on the registers, on the hardware registers, and the the rest of the time, it will be stati uh, statistic. Uh, it will leverage between two uh, two uh, real measurements on the registers. Okay. Uh, it has also software. Uh, so perf also uh, uh, provides software events 
So these are not using register specific hardware for that. It you just use atomic counters uh, on in the code. Um, okay. So all these features are great, but we saw that you have to load models. You have to uh, some of them use an interface on on DebugFS. Uh, it's not that easy to use every day. So what are the tools that make them a little bit easier to use? Well, we can start uh, with FTRAS. So FTRAS is also something in the kernel that uses features from the kernel. So but it proposes a lot of various trusters, a lot of trusters available. Uh, time sources, uh, it can use local CPU clocks, so uh, clocks that are not guaranteed to be uh, coherent on all the CPUs, but that are quite accurate on one CPU. It can use the global mono monotonic uh, clock that is less accurate. Of course, it can use also if you are not interested in timings, but in uh, in events, uh, atomic counters. The less overhead you can have, there is uh, no locks. Global hooks have a lot of overhead. Uh, global clocks have a, a lot of uh, overhead. Um, so. With FTRAS, you can give a lot of filters. You can filter on function names, on on uh, on with. Um, you can put um, generally on function name on events. Uh, it supports also. Uh, so it, it will use trust points, and it, it can use cap rows also. Uh, and you can do early boot tracing uh, using command line, kernel command line. So you just have to, on the command line, you put ftras e equals the name of your tracer, and the, tra the traces will start as soon as possible uh, for the uh, when the trace point framework, in fact, is activated. So basically, uh, FTRAS will put some stuff that uh, when you hit a function, you will be uh, not really a breakpoint, but you will be uh, um, you will do extra thing that will <coughs> log this entry, and there will be extra thing at the exits that will log the exit of the function, and it will time. It will uh, take timings of each uh, function execution. So you have some examples here of tracers uh, with FTRAS. So FTRAS is only based, uh, the interface with FTRAS is only based on DebugFS. You don't have to, uh, to have other tools with, with it. And you have, again, in DebugFS, tracing and the files there, you will have, have uh, the available tracers, the current tracer that you can activate, uh, the filters, you will have tracer by tracer, a lot of information, you can activate, deactivate them uh, when you want. So the function tracer, okay, each function, uh, you have a branch, tra a branch function tracer that will give you uh, for each function, trust the 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 stack uh, stack tracer uh, branch is uh, for if and things like that. Sorry, and the branch after the stack tracer for the stack of the uh, of the calls. Here, choose off is something I interesting. It take the last uh, stack that uh, gets to. Uh, the more, most uh, the, um, uh, the the biggest time passed with ear cues uh, deactivated. 
for example. So you can have a lot of information there. And you have for f trust because again, it's console-based, and when you have a lot of uh, traces, events, things like that, it's quite difficult to uh, how to say that, to um, to organize them and to uh, analyze them. So you have some uh, useful tools like TrustCMD and CanonShark. You can uh, take them on on Git. There is a, a Git repo for that. Uh, that will take your traces and try to analyze and to uh, sequential, do sequential uh, and uh, graphic uh, UI to use them. LTTNG is like a little bit like uh, FTRAS, but in there is a uh, um, like after us, but with an even more UI and uh, more functionalities, it, it can use trust points, cap probes, and current like after us. Uh, it is only available in models. And well, LTTG, the best and thing important with it, you can debug and trust in the kernel, but you can also do it on New Zealand. It, it uh, provides uh, libraries to, mm, for you to be able to put trust points on your programs and things like that. And have a complete, uh, complete traces and debugging and um, probes and debuggings uh, stuff from your application to deeply in the kernel. So here, uh, an example of LTTNG with the Eclipse uh, plugin. So in Eclipse now, you can download a lot of stuff uh, in from KGDB uh, plugin to LTTNG plugin to Trispan plugins to so you can have a lot of uh, different UIs uh, specialized for Linux debugging and tracing. Uh, the debuggers. Uh, talking a, a little bit about KGDB. It's in fact an implementation of a GDB of the all the GDB API in the kernel. So you can use your uh, GDB, your tool chain specialized GDB. So generally, you have a GDB associated to, uh, to your tool chain when you are doing, uh, you, when you are cross compiling and things like that. You can use it with the GDB, KGDB stuff of the kernel because it's in fact an implementation like GDB server on the user end. It is an implementation of the GDB, GDB API, API in the kernel. Breakpoints, watchpoints, all the step by step is all quite all architecture dependent. So there is a, a really big framework for KGDB in the kernel, and uh, it will use when it can outward breakpoints, outward watchpoints, things like that. Uh, it depends also on the SOC you are using. Uh, for example, Cortex A15 has a good is is uh, well supported all the watchpoint stuff and things like that all the uh, coprocessors that use the PMU and coprocessor 14 that use the register for wa watchpoints and and breakpoints are well supported on Cortex A8 the last time I I've seen uh, I've uh, seen it uh, there was no support on Cortex A9 you have only one Hardware watch point, for example. So it depends and it evaluates, uh, of course, also. So you have to, uh, to keep you informed on uh, the architecture evolutions. 
So KGDB, like LTTNG, have uh, an Eclipse plugin, and uh, you can do early. Uh, you can do early debugging with it also. So using uh, KGDB box, these are uh, common lines uh, arguments. You can so. KGDB wait, for example, we say to the kernel, okay, uh, we will do a GDB session, so you will wait for the GDB connection before uh, continuing, after having set up the, the GDB uh, framework in the kernel. Uh, KGTP is like a little bit like KGDB, so the burger, but it's not, it does not use the same framework, it uses KProbs to do its stuff. And uh, he, it has also uh, transport supports and serial Ethernet transports. Uh, I think the last time I checked, there is also an Eclipse plugin for it. So it's like KGDB, but not quite like KGDB. <coughs> and it's not in mainline for now. For the profilers, well, there is perf. So perf, are, uh, we saw that it is an, app, uh, an API, but it's also tools. So there is two parts in perf, and they are localized in the uh, kernel sources under tools perf. You can cross compile there. So in fact, when you do make and you activate perf, it will do the tools also. Uh, so, like FTRAS, there is a lot of profilers. There is a lot of trust within FTRAS. In Perf, there is a lot of profilers. And you can sampling based on events. When you hit an event, you will start your sampling. And when you, and, uh, you can deactivate it uh, through debugfs. Like FTRAS, it has a debugfs interface. And uh, and uh, you use perf at the command line to uh, <coughs> activate events. To so uh, the best is to see uh, to go uh, in the kernel, see under tools and perf. You see all all those tools, and uh, you have the perf tool, and you can uh, with the perf tool you can put. Okay, I want to try. Uh, I want to have a profiling of uh, cache misses with that program. So you have your user program, your launch, and uh, I I want to know how how uh, miss I had, how cycles I've done in the CPUs, how things like that. So just perf uh, minus e uh, the the profiling you want and the the um, say the the events you want and the command you want to to provide uh, a word on o profile o profile on x on x86 is different but o profile on arm it uses perf as it uh, has its backend and it's also a profiling tool so here an example uh, with perf tools. So here a perf top. So you can see uh, how much you entered CPU idle, for example, a lot of times. Uh, report. <coughs> so uh, you report when you. Um, So uh, the 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 cycle so function per function well quite obvious in fact all these tools uh, time charts to have uh, an idea of the scheduler and uh, the scheduler work with your program so here it is where your CPU one is running. There is there is deep, deep needle, sleeping things like that. So this is the scheduler image of what is going on on your system. 
Uh, there is little tools with that that can use, for example, gprof two dots that can use perf samples or uh, samples with uh, G, uh, gprof or samples with that can use a lot of different samples to, in fact, and using dots to make a graph of what is going on. A profiling graph of what what is going on on your programs from the user end to the kernel. Flam graph also. So this is more for the kernel. You you can see uh K3. K3 is so the time taken by and with the stack in fact for each function. Another thing for profiling, uh, memory leaks and memory monitoring. So in the kernel, we, we speak about some of the features, the most important ones. Uh, when you go to kernel hacking, you will see that is a lot and a lot of stuff. There is k probes, there is perf, there is trace points, there is all this, all that. But there is also uh, slab info, for example, to have information on the use of the uh, of your slabs. Uh, so the memory, uh, you have uh, code to debug spin locks or to debug locks. You have uh, debug features for all that is lockless algorithms like RC uh, read copy update algorithms and things like that. Really, there is, uh, I will say, dozens of profiling in the beginning to, um, stuff in the kernel. So, uh, and KMLIC, for example, can use some uh, slab info and things like that. And it's, it's quite, it is also in the, in the kernel arcing part of the kernel. And it is like a val grind for the kernel. It will uh, val grind when you use it with memcheck. Uh, it will collect all the calls to kernel and things like that. And when you hit K3 and things, like that, it, it will remove the, those calls and log a, a, at the end. Say you okay, you have done that kernel that vimalog and things like that, and you haven't free, uh, freed it. Okay. So, here, for example, a uh, report of common link. After, so you see, you have a, you have the stack that goes to the allocation of your object, or of the memory that you didn't free, free. And uh, you have uh, stack information. Uh, GFIS information, things, things like that. Like red grain, in fact. But in the kernel. Some tools, uh, quite important also. Uh, system tap, so it has a uh, system tap, is uh, quite a part in the, in the kernel. It has support for all the stuff in the uh, all the um, <coughs> features, the beginning features of the kernel. So K probes and can do lightweight debug with K probes. Uh, it has support for transparent and for perf. So it's it's quite a all-in-one tool that will use all the kernel features to uh, try to give you information and debugging. Uh, it's like, in fact, when you want to compare it to something. Uh, in Solaris, you have the Daytrace uh, functionality. You can do scripts, and you will add whatever you want at whatever point in the kernel you want. Function call, things like that. It's the same in system type using k probe, trace points, 
first events, things like that. Uh, on your host, you will build, you will script some things like this, for example. So this, this you have the, the, the script uh, syntax. And here, for example, we will change the MTU when we, uh, we get to the function tgtray get stacks in the module tgtray. So there, when the function is hit, it will call the function just we declared here and change the MTU at runtime. So this code will be inserted in the kernel by, the, by in fact, a module that is built from your script with the uh, with stuff that will parse your your script will generate uh, a source file you will build for your kernel and when you will load your module you will have the information what's it is useful not to have uh, uh, a deep knowledge of k probes, price points, things like that. You can do it yourself, or of course, you can do your model yourself using register k probe, register uh, uh, trace, uh, trace points, registering k probe, registering, things like that. System tab from just a script will do that for you. And you can that way. Uh, manage to uh, construct uh, a script base that you can reuse after to make debugging and profiling. Some words on uh, kexec. It's another functionality. It's quite different of the others. It is in fact uh, kexec is in fact a second kernel. It's a specific call that when you uh, you can set up to when you uh, when your first kernel crash or has a oops or panics, it will reboot automatically on a new kernel and give you the old memory access to to the old memory in a ELF format from proc VM core. So on your new kernel, you will be able to debug the old kernel that crash, panic, things like that. And this is better done with the crash utility that will, that is a utility that uh, simplify, in fact, the, the read of cores and things like that. Okay, so we've seen that there is a lot of features, lots of tools, in fact, in the kernel. What it is lacking today is more something like uh, simplicity. Because uh, you have a lot of tools, there are special for things, you have debug interface interface, you have UIs, you have uh, a lot of features, uh, things you pass from modules and things like that. But the, there is no real, perhaps, system tab, but even system tab, the, you have to put scripts and things like that. There is no really a tool that does all the stuff and simply does, does what you want. Is uh, like uh, have a, doing average, doing um, uh, just, uh, and coherency between and um, ah, connecting heavens to others and uh, sampling the, the, the correct timelines and things like that. Not know if, <laughs> sorry. Okay, thank you. I think it's time. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions. The list overhead, uh, I think it 
depends the list of it. Uh, I think it's breakpoints and cap rubs because uh, you don't have it when it's not activated. But I mean, um, the overhead when it's activated. Uh, and on cap rubs, and, and when you put a prob, when you associate a prob on a, on a trust point, or when you uh, load your model and you register your cap rub, for example. There you will have the overhead because you associate and you activate either the breakpoint, either the the trust point or something like that. So when when you are nothing when basically when nothing is associated to your trust point, your K probes, your uh, whatever stuff, generally all is done to make overhead as little as possible. And K probes, for example, has no overhead when they are not activated. When a probe or a function is associated to the probe, to the transparent, to all the other things, there you will have the overhead of the branching or the breakpoint and the overhead of the call of your function. And the overhead, so it depends also of the of the probe of the callback you've you done. Print K, you will have always your overhead. <laughs> if you, uh, the least one is uh, perhaps, uh, well, for a print K, I will say a trust point. Because uh, you have a low overhead for the branch and you don't have the overhead of, uh, of the context saving, context restoring, and things like that. It's just a callback. Yeah, uh, it keeps the memory. So, <laughs> well, uh, uh, hangs, hangs, hangs is more difficult than uh, for for the for the panic that that reboot or the the panic that uh, I think it's more uh, KGDB stuff oriented or more debugger. Uh, if if it's a crash, it's obviously a debugger or things like that. Well, uh, or maybe just seeing the what uh, the, the stack trace, but um, a debugger for for cr for crashes, for oops, for panics. Uh, it depends a little bit what makes panic. Uh, if you are if you want a complete image of your kernel at the time of the panic, uh, it's quite difficult. You can have you can try with the debugger, uh, perhaps with watch points, if possible, if you have a, an idea of where it is going. Well, you have timing problems in there. Uh, I don't have really the, the answer for that. Uh, the the message buffer directly. It's a good point, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 